men died there at Bitter Creek, and they say he ran away. Brandon, mark with a coward shame. What do you do when you're branded? Well, you fight for your name. He was innocent. Not a charge was true. But the world would never know. Brandon, scorned as the one who ran. What do you do when you're branded and you know you're a man? Wherever you go for the rest of your life, you must prove you're a man. down. Jason! <laughs> Good to see you, boy. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. You know, I ought to take that whole decanter away from you. You're supposed to be sick. Sick? I'm just sick of sitting here behind the line while you're out there where the action's going on. Got to keep an offensive mounted, boy. The minute a man sits back and warms his heels, the enemy starts creeping up on him. I can feel him sniffing around close at hand. Listen, you hear anything? Not a thing. That's him. That's the enemy. Time. You sit there and he bellies up on you from behind and then, whack. Taps and a volley of rifle fire, if anybody remembers. Uh, tell me, sir, what is this all about? I was headed for a good job out west when this telegraph brought me running back here. I thought you'd be breeding the last. Who is the man who signed this telegraph? Dr. Johnny e. Benton. I'm Dr. Benton. Mr. President. McCord. Sorry to drag you back here this way. Well, I didn't know it was you, sir. I hope nobody else did. We couldn't meet your train, but we knew the minute you hit town. Figured to head straight for this house if you thought I was ailing. Gotta be kept a big secret, boy. You see the general <clears throat> here? General. I'll brief the troops. You see the ammunition. Don't you go pulling rank on me. You're retired the same as I am. That was a request, not an order. Oh. I need your services again, McCord. It's a dangerous job and risky. What is it, sir? Seems somebody plans to assassinate me. We don't know who. It's mostly rumors. Well, my staff's got the jurors. I say let them shoot and I'll duck. I've been shot at before. They tell me there's other ways of killing a man. Knives, poison, explosives, train wrecks, runaway horses, and bad cigars like this. Got four boxes of them. Present from the Spanish ambassador. Trying to butter me up so I won't recognize the revolutionists down in Cuba. Sir, is there someone with a special reason to assassinate you? Someone? Everyone. They say I uh, appointed too many relatives and old army friends to public offices. Some folks got a little riled up when it came out your secretary of war sold trading posts on the Indian reservations for profit. Yeah, that's right. They hung the fifth school scandal and Black Friday around my neck. They claim I'm responsible for the whiskey ring fraud. The safe burglary fraud, the seal lock frauds, the subsidy frauds, 
In the last three days of heavy rain in California. A lot of people don't hold you responsible for those things. Yeah, and a lot of people do. The orneriest ones are right here in Washington after my hide. Any particular person or group? The Senate and the House. Now, there's a couple of groups for you. They're after me because I'm about to officially recognize the Cuban revolutionists. They say you're going to start a war with Spain, General. I know. And then there's the Black Hills bunch. They may be the ones to watch. I'm hated out in Dakota Territory because I won't use the army to drive the Sioux out of the Black Hills and open it up for the gold grabbers. Well, sir, if there is a plot against your life, isn't that the responsibility of the new Secret Service Agency? They belong to the Treasury. They guard important things like dollar bills. I brought you back because you know the Black Hills country. How do I fit in? There's a couple of big men from Dakota in town. James Sweeney and uh, Luke Carlisle. All fired up about the Black Hills. I'm the only one standing in their way. They've been heard saying as much. I want you to contact them. Work into their group. Find out what they're up to. They're not likely to open up to a stranger. These will make you an old friend in a hurry. Important data on the Black Hills brought back by government survey teams. I uh, may have colored them up a little here and there just to interest our greedy friends more. Tell them you're from the West and apply for a surveying job with them. Rough ones, boy. We'll meet here anytime you've got anything else to report. Nobody knows I came. All right, sir. I'll look up Carlisle and Sweeney just as soon as I can. All right. And McCord. It wouldn't hurt to talk and act anti-Grant. It's the popular thing. And you've got as good a reason as any man to hate the army and indirectly me. It's good to know there's a man who hates me I can trust. Hey, y'all get? Yes, ma'am. Captain McCoy. Albert, it's good to see you. Is Miss Lansing home? Well, now, Captain, if you just step thank in. Thank you, thank you. Jason. Lorette. Ah, months I've been trying to remember just how beautiful you are. My memory must be getting bad. Very bad. It's been over a year now. I know. How's your father? He died over eight months ago. Didn't you know? Oh, no, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. You know, I never heard from you. I must have written you a, a dozen letters. And I wrote you one letter. Over and over, a hundred times. But it was never right. Right? What do you mean? Maybe it's better this way, but it's not any easier. I'm married, Jason. I'm married to Senator Keith Ashley. He's a wonderful person and a very fine senator. You'd like him, Jason. You said you'd wait. I waited. For three years, I waited. I saw you just once in all that time. And when you left, you said, maybe. If I can ever work things out, maybe someday. Well, Jason, a girl gets older on maybes and lonely on some days. I'm sorry, Lorette. I wouldn't have come here if I'd known. You're welcome in this house any time. You know that. I'll be going. Congratulations and all the best. Please don't go. I'd like you to meet Keith. He's bringing home some house guests from Cuba. I have urgent business. I... I just stop by for a minute. There you are. Then it wouldn't have mattered one bit. It would have been just another inspection tour to see that the fort was still secure. Then sound, boots and saddle, and off you'd go. And I'd be left with another maybe. I'm sorry, Lorette. I... 
Congratulations. You, you did a wise thing, picking yourself a senator. I guess a fellow who spends his life on a horse kind of gets to thinking like one. I meant it. Please stay. Well, I meant it too. Uh, I have to see somebody about a job, a fellow named Sweeney. James Sweeney. He's a very good friend of Keith's. Well, maybe, maybe I will stay. I'd like to meet your husband. Good. There he is right now. Oh, Keith, I'm so glad you're home. I'd like you to meet someone. This is Jason McCord, my husband, Keith Ashley. Well, to know you, Senator. Mr. McCord, I'm delighted. Lorette's told me all about you. He wanted to run right off. Persuade him to stay for dinner. <sighs> yes, of course, you've got to stay. We'd enjoy it very much. And as a matter of fact, you'd enjoy meeting our house guests, Dr. Felix Cavera and his sister from Cuba. Thanks, it'd be a pleasure. Good, that's fine. This is the man who, with Agramante and Betancourt, will win freedom for Cuba, Dr. Felix Guevara. We declare the Denver Mint an Indian reservation? That's exactly what it amounts to, letting the Sioux sit on all of that gold. They don't want it, and there's plenty of other good land for them. Don't you agree? Well, I agree that President Grant is a stubborn man. Your home is beautiful, Senor Ashley. Ah, thank you, Senorita. Everything in your country is magnificent. Most of all, I like meeting a real Yankee vaquero. But I expected to see a big sombrero and pistolas. <laughs> well, you'll have to come out west for that, Senorita. Is that an invitation, Senor McCord? Or just like President Grant, not official. I hope we haven't interrupted the discussion. I hope we have. Maybe politics, no? <laughs> Allow us to join you, please. Whatever you are for, I will be against. Well, we were discussing the Black Hills question. Good, I am against it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure the Caveras would like a little rest after their long trip. But, McCord, if you'd like to hear that subject discussed by some of Washington's leading men, you come along with me tonight to Sprague's boarding house. A boarding house? Ex-President Johnson is usually there. He's a senator now. And there's a dynamic new group from Dakota Territory, headed by James Sweeney and Luke Carlyle. James Swain? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I would like to meet him, Senator. Oh, Mrs. S. Grant is a vindictive and prejudiced man. I put it to our great ex-president, Andrew Johnson, the senator from Tennessee. Is that right, Andy? Grant claims I drove him into the radical ranks when I made him interim secretary of war. He refused to speak to me at the inauguration. Wouldn't even ride in the carriage with me. Right, Andy. The qualities which made Grant our great war leader have evaporated in the White House. Grant had a fellow named Lincoln mapping his battles for him. Or maybe you wouldn't have been so great during the war either. Here, here, here. Well, now, I figure Andy Johnson ought to know which end of the barrel the bung hole's on. And if he says old useless ass isn't fit for his office, I say let's get him out. Here, 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 here. Strong talk. Strong men. They mean it. If you want to hear some that are even more stirred up, come on in and meet Sweeney and Carlisle. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet a friend. James Sweeney, Luke Carlisle, Jason McCord. Gentlemen, McCord. Senator, this is Jim Randall. Randall? He's going to do the survey in force, and we open up the Black Hills. Is that right? I'm a surveyor myself. I know that part of the country well. Oh? Sounds like we've got a lot in common. We all have one thing in common. That's right. A quick end to the present administration. How about a drink, gentlemen? Oh, thanks in a little bit for me. I've got a few things I want to say in that other room myself. And, um, I'll have a beer. You, uh, been around the Black Hills, McCord? Just got back. 
did a geological survey for the government. I uh, guess your findings are highly confidential. Until the Black Hills are open to the public, if they ever are. They will be, McCord. Sooner most people think. Well, it'll take a good-sized army to get the Sioux out of there first. And with all due respect, there's a pig-headed ex-general in the White House who won't give that order. That's a pretty good man sitting right below him, Henry Wilson. He's reasonable. He's also the vice president. Like checkers. You uh, jump on and move up a notch. You uh, honestly think the Republicans will nominate him at the next convention? Guard, you can take it from me. We're going into the Black Hills soon. Now, how would you like to have the job of surveying for us out there? Oh, hold on, Swaney. I've got that job. Best man will get the job, Randall. And you haven't gone over that country like McCord has. I've seen enough of the West to know who McCord is. He's a second-rate surveyor, if anybody will give him a job. <laughs> Jason McCord of Bitter Creek. Kicked out of the army for being a coward and a traitor. You think the government would hire him to survey? I was hired. I say you're a liar. Did you hear me? Job's yours if you want him, McCord. It doesn't matter what Randall said. No. It seems that you've got as much reason to hate the army and the man who used to head it up as we have. You'll be glad to know that he won't be bothering any of us much longer. Any day now, you can start packing for the Black Hills. Black Hills Bunch. They're mighty anxious to get their hands on that gold. Well, speak along, boy. What Sweeney say to you when you... I'm addressing the ball, General. We'll go right ahead and address it, General. I hope it's better than the address you made to the convention last summer. Swain, he didn't say outright he was behind a plot in your life. But he did say you wouldn't be around much longer to bother him. There are a lot of important men lined up against you. Senators like Orlando Phelps, Andrew Johnson, Big Iron Flynn, and Keith Ashley. Well, a lot of men are talking about running me out of office. There's nothing traitorous or seditious about that. Well, you better get back there and move in. Pardon me. Uh, stick close. Report anything that indicates they're ready to strike. Good shot, sir. Ah, a many. I've seen one-armed players do better. I'll drop you off at your boarding house, my carriage. You think it's wise for us to be seen together? Ah, black as pitch out tonight. And I didn't bring the White House coach. Besides, not a soul knows I'm out, except my driver. Good night, General. Good night. Let's go, McCoy. Good night, Good night sir. Good night, boy.
driver. He's dead. Look at this, sir. I wonder. What, what? That's a pretty fancy knife for the Black Hills bunch. Come on, boys, stir yourself. You've been sitting there staring at that fancy tote sticker for an hour. It worries me, General. It isn't between your shoulder blades, is it? That's the time to worry. Come on, on your feet, sound the charge. Let's rout the enemy before they have a chance to regroup. I appreciate your offer, but I can't let you do it. Figure I'm too old, eh? Oh, no. No, sir, that's not what I meant. No, as a matter of fact, I... I have other plans for you. What are the plans? Well, when this assignment is over, I'm going back to that job out west. It's a big one, engineering a railroad line. And I'm going to need a partner to head up the office. Sounds good to me. McCord and McCord. We'll build the west, son. I'll start packing right now. That's so fast. I've still got a job to finish here. Oh, yes. Someone's out to assassinate the president. Or me. Or both. I go along with Grant. I think it's Swinney and that Black Hills bunch. They got the whole country mad as a hornet because he won't use the army to run the Indians off all that gold. You know, I didn't get a look at the man I took this from last night. It was too dark. But a fancy Spanish knife just doesn't go with a man from Dakota. A hat doesn't go with a monkey either, but I saw one once. Well, I'm going out to the Sprague boarding house to look up Swinney. Wait a minute. That's risky. They're the same ones you tangled with last night. They saw you with Grant. I know that. Well, you can't just ask a man if he's planning to kill the president. No. No. I'll offer to do it for him. Huh? Mean anything to you? Not a thing. Is it supposed to? Well, you said last night you wanted to get rid of Grant. Soon. That's right. Well, are you waiting for him to resign? I'm an impatient man, McCord. I don't wait for things to happen. I make them happen. Well, uh, that's what I figured. Look, you're going to need a good man. Somebody who can get close to Grant. Maybe even alone with him. You got something in mind, McCord? Get to it. I did the surveying job for President Grant in the Black Hills. I've got good reason to ask him for a private meeting. Do what? What you want? Get rid of him? Forgotten as Randall said. Sure, I want Grant out of the way. If I impeach him about killing, now you get out of here. What scum like you working for me? You misunderstood me, Mr. Swain. I didn't mean kill him, I meant bribe him. About what happened last night. Are you all right? Well, I'm not hurting except in my head, but I am mixed up, Lorette. I'd like to talk it over with someone. Is your husband home? He's dueling. Just what did happen last night? Dueling? It's not a matter of honor. Senor Cavera is giving him lessons. He's considered a master of the sword and is giving an exhibition at the White House party tonight. Keith, is that good with a blade? <laughs> not Keith, Senor Cavera. Now, don't evade me any longer. I'm dying to know about that terrible fight last night. It must be the work of a madman. You didn't answer me, Jason. If there's a plot against the president's life, it must be the work of a madman, don't you think? Or someone not too handy with a blade. 
That's the second time you've tried to hit back at me by trying to insinuate something evil and corrupt about Keith. And it's not true. When he attacks a man, it's out in the open. Lorette, I'm not accusing him. I don't know who to accuse or suspect. All I know is I took this blade from one of the men who attacked us last night. Oh, no. Will you recognize it? It belongs to... At least it looks like one of us set from Keith's collection. couldn't have been Keith. It just couldn't. He isn't capable of such a thing. I know it, Jason. I'll prove it to you. I'll show you that he... Don't do a thing. Don't say anything. Not even to your husband until I can investigate further. Will you promise me that? Oh. Oh. Party tonight. We've been trying to get you to this little matter for some time, Mr. President. Wouldn't be here now. Something important came up. Uh, you'll have to remove the cigar, Mr. President. Work around it. Accord. What time are you showed up? Mr. President. Glad you finally made it. Wait outside a few minutes, Doctor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. President. I found the mate of that stiletto. It belongs to Senator Keith Ashley. Ashley? I don't believe it. But, sir, he's a blade fancier. And right now he's taking dueling lessons from Felix Quivera, the Cuban who's here to meet with you. There isn't a man in the United States Senate I'd accuse of a thing like this, especially Ashley. Well, I'm not accusing him, sir. Maybe the blade was stolen from him. By who? Well, it's only a guess, but offhand, I'd say someone who has the run of his house. Or maybe some thief who broke in. Maybe. Or maybe Senor Corvera. Why? What possible reason could he have for wanting me dead? I'm about to give him and his revolutionists what they've been begging for. Official United States recognition of their hunter government in Cuba. Yes, it does make more sense he'd want to protect you, keep you alive. Keith Ashley. That's an ugly thought, McCord. I know, sir. Well, maybe somebody planted that knife to make us suspect him. Now, will he be at your party tonight? Certainly. His wife is acting as my hostess. Mrs. Grant is under the weather. Well, I'll stand close by and keep my eyes open. I didn't invite you. I know. Your hostess, Mrs. Ashley, invited me to escort Quivera's sister. Good. Well, relax and enjoy yourself at the affair. And keep your eye on me. Forget about that Quivera woman. ready, Albert. Oh, Jason, Keith has to work late at the office. And I have to leave for the White House right now. I'm sorry. You and Sakura will have to go alone. Oh, that's fine with me. It's uh, too bad Keith can't go. Oh, he'll join us later. Albert is taking his costume down to the office, and he'll drive him straight from there. I see. You think that sounds suspicious? No, no, I think it sounds like hard work. You run along the road. Make yourself at home. Sakura should be almost ready. Senor Cuevera. Ah, Senor McCord. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. 
You make a most dashing vaquero. My little sister will be pleased. Is she ready? Are women ever ready, senor? This is Carlos Tacón, my associate. Carlos. We are staging an exhibition of epe fencing at the party tonight. And now, if you will excuse us, we are late. Vámonos, muchachos. See you at the party. <laughs> Senor McCord. Do you think McCord recognized him? I do not know. But we cannot take the chance. I know. Take him out and dispose of him. No, Felix, what are you saying? He must die, Socorro. Or he will ruin everything. Tonight, at the party, I will kill the president. You are mad to say that. No, Socorro. I am only being loyal to the Spanish Presidente. We must stop the Yankee President from giving recognition to the revolutionists. Without the help of the United States, we will soon beat them. And then once again, we can have our plantations and our slaves and a high office in the government which has been promised to me. So you sell out to the other side for money and influence. Hey! Must you kill Senor McCord too? It is a pity you do not join us. Now I must lock you up also. Take them down to the wine cellar and guard them well. I still say you are mad, Felix. You cannot kill the president. They will kill you first. No, little sister. It has been carefully planned. This will kill the president. President, this is Dr. Felix Clavera, our guest of honor. Well, glad to meet you finally, Senor Clavera. A great honor, Mr. President. Uh, your sister? It's a pity. Mr. McCord was unable to attend the party tonight. Some last-minute business, I believe. So Socorro could not come. Mm, too bad. Well, uh... Awkward way to hold a meeting, senor, but uh, diplomatic. I'll manage a few minutes with you before the evening is over, and I think I can promise you what you came for. That is my fondest wish, Mr. President. Senora? Mr. President? Mm, go ahead, my dear. Thank 
you fight for Cuba, you fight for greedy ones like Felix Guerrero. So he can have his plantations and his slaves. For say, senorita. And who will be the slaves? You will be his slaves. Have you no memories? <laughs> costume and an invitation. Well, I'm expected. I'm Jason McCord. Move along, Mr. I've got to get inside. I've got to get in there. Lord. Senator. What are you doing outside? Why aren't you in there? Where's Senorita Cabrera? I have to talk to you right away, Senator. McCord, what is it? What's going on? Senator, I don't have time to explain. I'm sorry. Our guest of honor, Dr. Felix Cabrera has kindly consented to give an exhibition in fencing. His opponent will be Senor Carlos Tucan. Gentlemen. Another exhibition, my friends, against a different kind of blade. McCord, what the devil? Why don't you call the captain of the guard, Senor McCord? You know why. Wars start over assassination attempts. Yes. And I'm going to kill you and the president. Not tonight, Senor. <laughs> Music! Everybody dance! Dance! Guerrero, huh? Yes, sir. Look at this, Mr. President. That's a slow-acting poison on the tip of the blade. The idea was to nick the president. An apology. Tomorrow morning, no president. Even though we're on opposite sides of the fence most of the time. I want you to know I never once had the slightest doubt about you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. Hey, McCord, why don't you stick around for a while and we'll have a nice, quiet game of pool. And General, why don't you take a nap? A nap? Why, we're going west. As soon as he can find a spot to settle down and start his company, McCord and McCord. Call on us when you want a state surveyed or a bridge built across the Mississippi. <laughs> I'll do that. And I may be looking you up as soon as I run out of a job here. I'll need steady work. That's right. You will. Come on, come on, boy. We can't dilly dally around here all day. Senator McGord. Be happy, Lorraine. Mr. President. Thank you, McCord. McCord. You know, he uh, may not always have my vote, but he will always have my respect and my loyalty. I know he will, Senator. We both know how to pick the right man. Don't we, Mr. President? Mm -hmm.
you're branded when you go on a loan of his general ring and the men who die he can never speak the truth branded that's not the way to die what do you do when you're branded Can you live with a lie?